Um, welcome to Thursday, the 4th of February. And today we're looking at, can I use prepositional phrases? Um, so firstly, we're just going to do a quick bit of work on our spellings, our spelling rule for this week, um, which is adding uh, sure and sure endings. Um, so we've got three endings to add here because we remember that some words uh, sounded like they ended in sure, but actually it was a different spelling. So um, I've got the the sentence, the sort of word word starters here, the first few letters of the word um, here on the left. Um, and then I just want you to rewrite them and put the correct ending on them to make a word. Some of them might not look like any sort of word at the moment, but if you play around with the endings, putting different ones on, um, hopefully you'll see that they all do make words with those correct endings. So I'll let you pause the video and have a go at writing those. Okay, so... Um, so the end is we're looking at end in sure and sure. And then there are some almost like uh, trick ones that try and make you think it ends in sure, but they don't. So we've got uh, the top ones are adventure, sculpture, and nature. Um, we've only got the ones that end in S-U-R-E, sure. That's pleasure, measure, pressure, and treasure. And then the bottom two sound like the end sure, but actually because they're this word that ends C-H, We've got ch root word it's just er at the end which makes teacher and stretcher but it's just to remember that some words sound like the end like t-u-r-e but actually they're the c-h-r-e-e-r ones uh there's not many of them but you can spot them because the end in the end in the ch there okay today is uh shouldn't be too tricky should be quite straightforward today uh what we're looking to do is use prepositional phrases we've looked at these before just to remind you, a prepositional phrase is a short phrase, a short few words that start with a preposition and tell you where something is. Um, so our prepositions here I've put is under and behind. So they're the prepositions I've used in these phrases. Uh, but to make them a phrase, you need to add, well, under where or behind where. So very simply, I put under the bed, that's a prepositional phrase, and behind the wardrobe. That's prepositional phrase. Um, and you can see that prepositional phrases can pretty much go anywhere in a sentence. So if I was saying um, under the bed, there was a smelly sock, or I can put there was a smelly sock under the bed, you know, they can be moved around um, in the sentence really. Um, and also you might notice they can also be working as fronted adverbials as well. If I put under the bed comma, there was a smelly sock, that works as a fronted adverbial. Um, but what we're looking at today, they are prepositional phrases, and we're looking at just coming up with some today, and that should be really straightforward. Uh, just some examples and prepositions you might want to use, I've got on this slide. So um, before I show you, if you could just have a go, uh, just pause the video and have a go at coming up with some prepositions that we could use for showing where something is. We're not thinking about the ones to do with time, like before or after or during at the moment, just the ones that show you where something is. So. See how many you can come up with. Okay, so there's quite a few. I, I may not have got all of them um, because there are lots, but um, here's some which come up. So we've got under, behind, beside, on top of, beneath, between, next to, inside, outside, in front of, through, on, over, above, along. So all of these things can be used to show where something is. So if you, if you do get stuck today, come back to this slide or come back to the ones you've jotted down because they're going to be your prepositions, which you can use to create prepositional phrases with. Now, as you know, we're writing our poem about a monster and we've got lots of expanded noun phrases to describe our monster at the moment. So today we're going to think about uh, not what he looks like anymore or she looks like anymore. Or I don't know what a monster is he, she, it, I'm not sure. Uh, but not to think what they look like anymore, but to think about where they might be hiding. So think about your house. I don't know if your house looks like this. My house certainly doesn't look like this. But think about the inside of your house. Now, where could a monster be hiding? It doesn't have to actually be the inside of your house. I'm thinking maybe could be like if you've got some like rubbish bins around the back or around the side or there's a shed in the garden or something like that. I think maybe all of your kind of house or maybe garden or outside your house or wherever, think about where your monster could be hiding. Um, 
So ooh, this is again not my house, but you know, you you can make up where where these things might live. Um, so I'd like to come up with as many different prepositional phrases you can today to describe where a monster may be hiding in your house. Um, as you do it, I just want to make sure that you understand that you're, which are the prepositions you're using. So um, just like I did earlier, can you make sure you underline the preposition in each phrase? So just to go back really quick. Just here, I underlined the preposition as part of the prepositional phrase. So you can just make sure you do that so you really have a clear idea of what the preposition is and what the prepositional phrase is. Um, so, yeah, just loads of places where your monster might be hiding. So my one might be, really quickly, um, inside the washing basket. So that might be where my monster's hiding. And I've underlined inside for that's a preposition. So I'd like you to come up with as many of these prepositional phrases for where a monster could be hiding as possible. Don't just think about the obvious places. Everyone knows that monsters like to hide under the bed. Um, and often they like to hide in a wardrobe or in a cupboard. But have a think about different places that are a little bit more strange that a monster might hide and try and vary those prepositions as well. I think it's quite easy with monsters to get caught up with going, oh, well, they're inside this, they're inside that, they're inside that. But try and use lots of different ones. So where could they be hiding under? What could they be hiding above? Uh, maybe they are stretched out along something, are stretched out along a bookshelf, or I'm sure you come up with something better than that. But they could be stretched out along something stretched out along a washing line or something. I don't know, where could these monsters be hiding? What could they be over, under? What could they be hiding between as well? What could they be hiding next to? I'm sure you can come up with loads. As a general guide, I think, you know, one star sort of minimum, you come up with six prepositional phrases. A uh, pretty decent job, 10 prepositional phrases you can come up with. If you can come up with 12 or more, that'd be three stars. That'd be brilliant if you come up with more than that, especially if you're using 12 different prepositions and 12 prepositional phrases. I think that'd be an excellent job. Um, so I look forward to seeing some of those on Dojo. And then tomorrow, we're looking ready to put together our prepositional phrases with our description of our monster to create a great monster poem. So that's it for today. I look forward to seeing these.